Sentinels, I'm Amelia. And I'm JP. And we're sharing our unconventional life with you from Ecuador. And Alone is booming. Yes, it is. We have several new stores and restaurants to show you. And we're going to introduce you to an internationally famous Ecuadorian who lives just a couple blocks from us. We recorded this video a few weeks ago, and since then we have a couple of new developments that we want to share with you before we show the rest of the video. Yes, and the first is that Ecuador has a new president. Guillermo Lasso was elected the president after the runoff election on Sunday, April 11th. Yes, and I'm going to talk about his top 10 policy plan for Ecuador in this coming newsletter on Friday. So if you want to sign up for the newsletter, I'll put a link to that below. I'm going to talk about what he has planned for Ecuador. Yes. Uh, the second new development is that the water shortage in this area of the coast, so in Santa Elena, has started to escalate because we've had a drought, we haven't had nearly as much rain, and the rivers are dry, and people need water. Yeah, and the aquifers are down too, so a lot of the wells are, you have to dig them deeper to get more water out of them. So this has been an ongoing problem for a long time. This is not a new development. In fact, there's been water rationing going on in Montanita and Mangrelalto and some of the other comunas for quite a long time, several years. But it is getting worse. The government had promised to either run a pipeline or build a desalination plant. Neither of those have been done yet. So we are on water restrictions. Yeah, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that things start to improve. Uh, the area of Libertador, is that right? Lib Libertador Lib Bolivar. Thank you. I was going to somehow mix up that name. <laughs> anyway, they uh, blocked the road last week in a form of protest to get the mayor's attention. And uh, from what we understand, they did have a meeting with the mayor and the other communas are meeting to um, try to work on a solution to mm -hmm. this problem. So yeah. keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, Salinas and La, uh, La Libertad, they have a water line from Guayaquil, so they don't have this issue. And Manta has run a water line all the way down to Ayampe, so they don't have the issue. It's pretty much just this stretch of coast north of uh, La Libertad to up to La Entrada, so in encompassing Olona, Montanita. So it is a problem. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will get resolved soon. But that is not stopping alone from booming. So now I think we'll share the rest of the video with you. We're going to introduce you to our famous neighbor in just a bit. But first we wanted to tell you about how Alone is booming despite the pandemic, starting with La Feria Huancavilca. The Feria is every Saturday in the park in the center of Alone. It has all sorts of awesome stuff made by local craftsmen. And I, it's really fun, we love going. There's really cute clothing and jewelry, and I love looking at the handmade baskets and hats and purses mm -hmm. and those cute little piggy bank things. Yeah, and they have CBD oil, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And they have some bamboo, like silverware and straws that you can buy. And then those wooden toys are really cool. Yeah, the handmade wooden toys. Those would be great if I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I might buy one anyway, just to play with it. And of course we have our salsa addiction. So we get this incredible ahi artesanal from uh, Anya. There's organic produce from the local farmers, from the comuna. It's all sorts of amazing thing. And of course food, you can get food. I got these really cute earrings and this bracelet last Saturday at the Feria. It's great because they were handmade beads made out of recycled paper, which I think is really cool. It is really cool. <laughs> We do enjoy going to the feria every Saturday and stocking up on my favorite salsa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, the next place we want to talk about is a brand new little tienda called Vitalica. Yeah, it's a great little new store offering different types of organic specialty items, gluten-free items, and they also have some nice skincare products available, which is something we don't see a lot of in Alone, and they are going to be offering facials as well. And it's going to have a cafe soon. Yeah, the cafe will feature organic coffee, wine, and I think they're going to have sandwiches. I'm not exactly sure but I'm sure it will be delish yeah that'll be nice yes and the next place we want to talk about is Momo which we featured in a previous video I'll put a link in the description in case you missed it but we want to talk about their tienda in a little bit more detail yeah their tienda is amazing they offer a wide variety of gourmet and hard to find products mm -hmm. for your kitchen <laughs> and your tummy <laughs> <laughs> they have a great craft beer selection and a lot of different wines and they even have champagne which can be really hard to find here yes it can and they also have a lot of locally produced products and they sell their own salsas which they make in-house and those are muy rico <laughs> yes <laughs> muy they rica. are muy rica. <laughs> <laughs> all right the next thing we want to talk about are three new restaurants that we have in town yes the first one is echo tribe and that one is open for breakfast which is nice 
<laughs> yeah, they're open for other meals too, but it's one of the very few places that actually opens for breakfast here. Yes. The next place is the Lotus Lounge. Yeah, that one is sushi and vegan. And right now they're doing vegan lunch specials and then they're doing sushi and vegan sushi in the evenings. That's awesome. Yes. And the Mali Thai restaurant, we finally have a Thai restaurant in Olone and it is muy delicioso. That it is. I like the atmosphere a lot. They did a nice mm -hmm. job. Yeah, it's great just to go in there and hang out and have a drink. It's a really cool place and the food is delicious. It is. All right, now for the remodeled restaurants, we have three that are either remodeled or being remodeled. The first is Il Papagayo, which used to be where the Vitalica store is and they moved just up the street to this place called Oha. So they have a new location. Yep, and it's really nice. And as per usual, the food is delicious. <laughs> yes, it is. The next place is called Spon de Luz, which we actually have never eaten at, but it's a popular Ecuadorian restaurant here in town and they've recently remodeled. It's always busy, so mm -hmm. the food must be good. Yep, and the last place is Neytuno. They are still in the process of remodeling and we would like them to hurry up because we miss them. Yes, that's our favorite <laughs> pizza place in Olona. They have delicious, Italian style, like thin crust pizza. It's muy riquissimo. See, <laughs> <laughs> Alone also has electric scooter rentals and they appear to be super popular because we are seeing them zipping around all over town. And I'm going to say see and not hear because they are super quiet. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear them at all until no. they're right behind you. <laughs> and they're often being driven by children. So you got to watch out because they aren't. <laughs> But boy, they sure look like fun. They do look like fun. And we've heard that they cost $3 to rent for an hour and that you can get longer rentals, like a half day or full day for $10. We're not exactly sure what the length of time is. As JP pointed out to me earlier, probably until the battery runs out. Yeah, it's probably three <laughs> bucks an hour or $10 per battery is yeah. what I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> All right, the next thing we want to mention is our good friend Javier at Bike Spondeluz. He's the guy that took us on our tour to Dos Mangas to see the Howler Monkeys. He has bike rentals and does all kinds of tours, but now he's selling new bikes as well. Yep, so you can get your pedal on. <laughs> yes, it's nice to actually see some bikes for sale here. We just haven't seen that since we've been living here. Alone is continuing to work on its beautification. They've done a lot of work to enhance the magic of the city or the <laughs> town, I should say. <laughs> the Pueblo Magico. See. Si. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot of new sidewalks they've been putting in, laying new bricks and new walls mm -hmm. built, a lot of trash pickup and cleaning some empty lots. And But the, I think the best part, there were all the murals. Yeah, they've painted even more murals and they are beautiful. Yeah, there's my favorite, I think, is the one by Punto Verde and it's it's kind of a compilation of a bunch of different artists showing a bunch of different nature scenes and famous people. So that, that's probably my favorite. Yeah, favorite. and I love the one over by Molly Tai, which is more Asian inspired. And it's very peaceful and relaxing. And now for our featured guest. Yes, before Il Papagayo moved, we used to go sit over there on the patio and I would observe somebody up on the balcony across the street painting over at that hostel from time to time, which I always thought was pretty cool. Yeah, we enjoyed sitting there watching. We always pointed him out, oh, there he is painting yep. again. And we also enjoyed the art gallery that's on the first floor of that hostel. What we didn't know is that he's a famous Ecuadorian artist born in Cotopaxi, but now living in Alone. Yeah, he lives just a few <laughs> blocks from us. His name is Olmedo Kimbita, and he's internationally famous. He's been featured in art exhibits around the world. Yeah, he is amazing. His artistic style is a bit like Picasso's cubism, mixed with a little Inca flair and a lot of bright colors like the Latin colors, although some of his things are more muted. Yes, I really enjoyed musing over his art. I love it, it's very beautiful, but it's also a bit thought provoking, at least for me. He has two expositions coming up in Cuenca and the first one is in May and that one is focused on mother and child. And the second one is in June, and that one focuses on caballos, which is horses. That's near and dear to my heart. Yeah, he was working on those paintings when we were there meeting him and chatting with him. And it was really interesting because he said that one of the reasons he likes to uh, paint horses is because of their geometry and symmetry. If you're in alone, feel free to stop by his gallery. It's in the Kimbita Hostel and Cafe. It's right across the street from the church. Yes, and we want to give a big thanks to Ed Lindquist with Cuenca Expats Magazine for arranging this interview. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, Ed. And if you want to learn more about Kimbita, they're going to do a whole expose on him in the next edition of Cuenca Expats Magazine. So we'll put links to all of this stuff, including Kimbita's website. You can buy his artwork online. Yes. We'll put all those links in the description below. That's all we have for this video. If you liked it, leave us a thumbs up, please. 
Yeah, and we wanted to let you know too that we've almost reached our next goal of 500 patrons over on Patreon. As soon as we reach that goal, we're gonna have a live stream that's just for our patrons. Yeah, and we also have a private chat community which is booming as well. So mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to interact with other unconventionals in a safe environment. Yeah, it is really helpful at taking the mystery out of the move because there are a lot of people who already live here and they are eager to answer your questions if you have them. Yeah, they're pretty amazing. All right, guys, hope you have an unconventional day. We will see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.